Joyup examined the scan report again, trying to make sense of it. His autodoc had scanned the pink one twice, once after the escaped prisoner incident, and just now, after the monstrous little thing had nearly drowned itself. And the contradictory report in his hands didn't make deciphering the creature any easier. He was supposed to be checking to make sure it hadn't inhaled any water into its lungs, but the report insisted that this human was in fact made of mostly water. Why did its internally developing shell have so many gaps in its upper torso? Its lower torso almost didn't have any developing shell at all. Joyup glanced over at the pink one in its cot. It didn't look distressed in the slightest. Actually, it looked somewhat relaxed, reclined on the much larger furniture. Captain Sal had moved the pink one into medical for the remainder of the voyage, citing that there were no more passenger rooms available, while the previous one was still being repaired. But Joyup suspected that the wily old captain just didn't want the human left unsupervised in case it hurt itself or anyone else. At least that gave him time to study it. Deep inside one of the ship's dark cargo holds, a small vermin creature sunk his front teeth into the satisfyingly textured frayed cargo strap. The strap eventually gave way, and several hundred kilos of wooden and metal crates fell down from where they had been poorly stacked, quickly ending the unfortunate creature beneath their mass. After the noise had stopped, other curious vermin cautiously approached to see what new surfaces were revealed to explore. One of the wooden crates had been split by its fall, leaking a slight but distinct odour that sent the vermin fleeing in panic. Slowly, a hairy creature emerged from its accidental prison, large glassy eyes taking in its surroundings. Nearly invisible in the low light, it silently lowered itself on an uneven number of legs to consume the crushed vermin remains. Nathan was trying his best to relax, thank the stars the voyage was nearly over, they should reach the next station the following morning. He was grateful to Captain Sal for his concern for his well-being, but being stuck in the medbay was boring. And frankly speaking, the pale doctor who kept looking up from his work at him was starting to feel creepy. He had a sneaking suspicion that if he couldn't find somewhere else to be soon, he was going to be subjected to some examinations. Maybe he could ask to go for a walk. It was a curious thing, watching the pink one balanced on only two legs. Joya paid careful attention to the rhythmic movements for his study as he supervised his evening walk. From a safe distance behind it, of course. The human knew he was there, but didn't seem inclined to attempt any conversation or other activities. That suited Joya just fine. The less interactions it had, the less could go wrong. Before they had left, he had taken the time to fill out a maintenance request for his autodoc. It had to be giving false readings, that was the only possible logical explanation. Look at how smoothly it moved. Almost like it was never meant to develop into its adult form. There were plenty of species that moved on only two limbs, but never in their juvenile stage. Suddenly, the pink one used those elegant movements to accelerate away at speed, while yelling something that didn't translate properly. Alarmed, Joyup gave chase but quickly fell behind until he had no realistic chance of catching up. It had promised not to do exactly this when he had agreed to let it out. Joyup took a moment to compose himself and then used his communicator to message the captain. Just what in the hell did puppy mean anyway? Reem was reattaching the maintenance cover on the auto dock when the pink one sped through the door and into its corner of the room, happily cooing to itself. Seeing the hairy black-on-black -black venomous creature it was holding to his thorax, Reem fainted. At least he was already in the bed bay.